Homeschooling, Successes, Challenges, and Sacrifices We're David and Beverly, and we're the parents of three children, mostly the products of homeschooling. We want to share some of the experiences we have had and give links to resources that have helped us and continue to help us along the way. Melissa is 19, a sophomore, a math major at a prestigious university. Celeste, 16, is homeschooled while taking high school correspondence classes from American School and shortly plans on enrolling in a local junior college. Joseph, 14, has been homeschooled but attends a public high school in this, the 2010-2011 school year. When Celeste was about three, shortly after receiving inoculations, she started developing symptoms of autism. While she remained verbal, her symptoms were quite pronounced, including repetitive talking on few subjects, a fascination with shiny objects, and violent emotional outbursts. Her actions were quite unpredictable. She twice suddenly ran into a very busy street. After being diagnosed with autism, she was enrolled in a special preschool, then later went to our neighborhood elementary school. While the school district tried to help her and did some good, she was not making nearly the kind of progress that would lead to normal function. Beverly had earlier heard about an organization named NACD, the National Association for Child Development. To learn if we really wanted to do this for Celeste, we listened to what were then called the parenting tapes, and now they're called the parenting CDs. NACD goes to the root causes of disabilities, not just the symptoms. Of everything we looked at, NACD was the one organization that seemed to have the best understanding of Celeste's disabilities as well as a plan of action to deal with them. Fortunately now, nearly 12 years later, Celeste is what some would call post-autistic. Beverly's account of Celeste's treatment and recovery is found on NACD's website. Celeste made some of her recovery while in public school, but made most of her recovery while being homeschooled. Melissa had ADHD symptoms, and Joseph was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome and had a speech delay. To follow through NACD's recommended program for each child and assure that there were fewer opportunities for setbacks, we made the decision to homeschool all three children. In NACD's newsletter, Melissa told the story of her recovery from ADHD symptoms. For assistance with curriculum, Beverly joined a local homeschooling group and attended homeschooling book fairs. In addition, she found classes on video from a school in Utah, the Liahona School. To get the recordings of classes was not real cheap, but by getting the classes in a sharing program, we were able to get classes in science, mostly biology, and in American history. The classes were used as enrichment material and were not taken for credit. For math, the children followed the Saxon math program that includes constant spiraling of past material while introducing new material. For high school, Melissa enrolled in the American School of Correspondence in Illinois. Melissa obtained a high school diploma from American School, and Celeste is currently enrolled in American School. While finishing her studies at American School, Melissa enrolled at the local junior colleges. She entered a dual enrollment program, simultaneously receiving college and high school credit. There was no tuition paid with this program. She took drafting, computers, and pre-calculus, as well as writing and French. Celeste is planning to attend the local college soon. We were a little concerned with Melissa in that we were not quite sure how well her homeschooling math training would prepare her for college and in turn were concerned that her junior college pre-calculus might not prepare her for a more competitive university environment. We are pleased that she has done very well on university calculus. In addition, she received a 780 math score on her SAT, a nearly perfect score. Getting great SAT scores and straight A's at American School and Junior College helped her to obtain a prestigious four-year university scholarship. In addition, she received a substantial scholarship from American School. She is a math major and plans to minor in Mandarin Chinese. I was asked by my former boss, Karen, pictured at the right, if Melissa was able to do so well because I am a high school math teacher. I replied that technically, I only occasionally helped her with math. Beverly helped her much more than I did, but I think I helped most by setting a good example in a couple areas. I was setting a good example by continuing to learn and, and by working hard. Since Melissa has become a top scholar and Celeste has had great success in overcoming her difficulties, many of our friends and relatives are shocked that Beverly, such an ardent homeschooler, would have Joseph attend a public high school. 
But the truth is that even though we seem to have had some sort of formula worked out with the Saxon math, the American school, the junior college, and so on, it was never really a formula. We believe it's important to consider the needs of each child. In Joseph's case, he attends a magnet program at the inner city school where I teach. The school has a program in technology and media that seems tailor-made for his interests, and he is doing great. Joseph, though only 14, is very strong at math. I occasionally test him. Now I test him on advanced Algebra 2 level work, and his skills surpass those of most Algebra 2 students I have had. As an example of his skill, he quite easily worked out the problem shown. He gives every indication that college readiness-wise, he will be up there with Melissa. In addition to the resources thus far mentioned that we use, there are cultural aspects of our family that we think assist our children in being successful at learning. We are a reading family. Our faith has as one of its tenets. Seek ye out of the best books, words of wisdom, and study and learn and become acquainted with all good books and with languages, tongues, and people. Each family member has a library card and uses it frequently. The children read mostly fiction, but also read nonfiction well and often, especially Celeste. They have a habit of mind to want to learn more. Also, our faith has recommended guidelines for young people that concentrate on the development of character, addressing things such as dating standards, language, modesty, education, addictive substances, and other things that can make a positive difference in a person's life. This element is what I would call the values aspect of education. Character is what gets them through the tough times, building a foundation for doing what it takes to be successful in the long run. Working on character cannot be minimized. The great coach John Wooden taught, be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are, while your reputation is merely what others think you are. I believe that values and character are the most important aspects of education. Another thing we do, as encouraged by our church, is to hold a weekly family meeting called Family Home Evening, where we might have an activity or game, have a lesson about something important, secular or religious, and take care of family business so we can all be on the same page as we work toward our family and individual goals. We initiated this family practice as soon as we were married and continue the practice today. Another thing that has made a difference is limited television. This is our 20-inch television in our living room. Most of the time it is not on, and when it is on, it is mainly to watch educational DVDs and exercise DVDs. Although we also use it for entertainment, such as movies and recorded television shows of our own choosing. For live TV, it's pretty much limited to a few live sporting events, State of the Union addresses, and edu election returns. We have never seen American Idol, Dancing with the Stars, America's Got Talent, The Simpsons, Survivor, Lost, or any of the current or recent television shows. When telemarketers call to try to sell us cable or satellite TV, they are amazed that we have never had it and have no intention of getting it. One thing we use our television for is to watch DVDs produced by the teaching company. We buy these great products when on sale, find them at discount bookstores, thrift stores, garage sales, and even check them out from the public library. Which brings us to the next point. A lot of homeschoolers thrive in remote locations, which is getting more and more feasible due to sources accessible via the internet. However, one reason we love living in a big city, in our case Dallas, Texas, is the accessibility of great resources from the city's public libraries. Beverly searches whatever she wants from the entire library system to get books, tapes, movies, etc. In addition, all our children have done volunteer work at our local public library. For computer use, we have at present three working computers in the house, all connected via a switch and wireless router to high-speed internet. However, the children do not participate in social networking sites. We do not play video games. What do the children do on the computers? They use a brain development program promoted by NACD, Simply Smarter. They use Rosetta Stone to learn French, Spanish, and Chinese. Joseph, who loves chess, uses Chess Master 9000. He uses PowerPoint, MS Word, and Windows Movie Maker 
to make creative projects like videos. I am the one who uses the computer the most. I've made over 200 videos such as the one you are now viewing, mostly educational with an emphasis on algebra and math. I have a website, www.gdogenterprises.com, where I have educational DVDs for sale and other links to resources. Here are four cell phones that I confiscated during class one day. Our children use cell phones sparingly. Melissa, now away at school, is the only one who has a cell phone, although Celeste is itching to get a cell phone, mainly because she sees that so many others have them. This is the children's chore chart. Our children have household responsibilities. The chart is circular to rotate these responsibilities. Beverly also prepares individual charts the children use to track their progress and what needs to be done. Modest work-based allowances are given the children for their efforts. We have found that the children are happier when they have more structure in their lives and responsibilities help make this happen. Our children have their MP3 players and have access to music via the downloading service I subscribe to, but are not as actively involved in it as most young people today. Now for the sacrifices. The main sacrifice we've made for our children has been that Beverly gave up her career as an attorney when Melissa was born. She has started working part-time for about three years now and hasn't been able to get back into the legal profession yet. She was one of the top law students at a very good law school and sacrificed her law career for her career as a mother. Although Beverly's sacrifice of career has probably been greater than mine, I have sacrificed as well. About nine years ago, I decided that I would like to become an algebra and math teacher. While it has worked out for me in terms of being a career I enjoy and plan to stay with, the compensation is not as much as I had enjoyed in engineering jobs. Part of the reason for my decision was to have more time available to do things with the family while children are still at home. Our sacrifices have contributed to us being in middle age, not close to having the type of financial security we would like to have. Maybe we'll have to live in a house like this one. But on the other hand, we see our children moving toward having the education and the work ethic necessary for them to be happy and successful in life as they work toward self-sufficiency. In reality, being a parent is an eternal job, and when it comes to assuring our children's success and happiness, we are really never out of the woods. I still remember the words of our doctor as he handed our first newborn child, Melissa, to me. He said, Now comes the hard part. While these succeeding 20 years have been challenging, they have been wonderful years, and we are privileged to have had the great opportunity to be parents especially in this age when we have had so many tools to help us along the way. We don't believe that our way is the only way. In fact, our way continues to evolve as we discover new things. But we thought that in our story there are elements that might be helpful to others as they negotiate the path of parenthood. If you have comments or questions or suggestions, we look forward to hearing from you. This has been Homeschooling Successes, Challenges, and Sacrifices. Thanks for viewing.